I'm Carol Peters and you are watching Arts 101 for September 2013. Thank you for joining us. This month's episode is about journeys. Journeys with words, journeys by travel, and career journeys displayed and represented by art and words. First, I will take you to my studio and show you some of the art pieces I have been working on that represent my journey of exploration and media and discovering a new way to paint. Let's go take a look. Welcome to my studio. Um, I'm getting ready for an art show called Journeys and it's going to be a, a fabulous show. And I had this idea when I was approached by one of the ladies that uh, was actually involved in the, in the show. And she had walked the Camino in Spain and it was a physical journey and a spiritual journey and she's a poet. And she said, I'd love to have some paintings. And I thought to myself, what can I do? <laughs> and I'd always wanted to kind of weave the people in my life together as far as um, bringing them in a situation where they're doing something creative at the same time. So let me let me kind of tell you how, how um, it works. Basically you need two canvases and right now I'm in, a, in the process of doing the painting on this uh, canvas on the bottom. I shot them with some uh, spray paint because I like the metallic. I painted this one this morning uh, with acrylic on top and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut this canvas up and cut this canvas up and weave them together and it's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I'll just go ahead and show you an end result right now so you kind of have an idea of what it looks like at the end and then I'll just start painting and we'll go from there. All right, let me show you the one my little grandkids did. Um, <clears throat> this is the end result, and my grandson had uh, actually shown me how to do this balloon technique where you take a balloon and dip it in paint and just hop on the canvas so you're not smearing it. So I told him, I said, teach me how to do it. So he did, and then we painted another one, and this is cut straight down and straight across. And you can see in the back, um, when I turn it around, how it's... Um, actually woven together and you can see it's very very symmetrical I measured it cut it it worked I was totally excited so having this be successful I was like on my way to another <laughs> experiment uh, my son and his wife were over and I actually wanted everybody to paint on one canvas and have it like a family painting but they were having so much fun and they completely fill the canvas that they you know had to have their own so this is theirs they painted a face first which um, if you get really far back you can see it and then they didn't really want to do this I forced them <laughs> I, I told them I, you know you have to it's a family I don't have that many family here at the same time so let's do it so they did it and they loved it and of course they got into it and you know um, had a great time. They put the paint on really thick. So when I was cutting it, I was having a hard time getting through those big globs. But um, really turned out nice. In fact, everybody loves it because you can see the face. So what I'm going to do right now is take you through the process. Uh, this morning I painted uh, this. Um, it actually reminds me of calla lily leaves, which uh, the calla lilies are my favorite flower. And I just thought, I'm going to try something now that's a little bit more representational that you can actually tell it's a leaf instead of just doing a pattern of movement and color. Um, so this is the flat one. You can see it's on a flat piece of canvas. I buy it by the roll. And I did this this morning. I shot it with um, spray paint <laughs> and then came in with my acrylic and went over it. 
And I decided this time, because I'd been doing um, the pattern with movement and rhythm and line and color, that I would change it up a little bit and do something that you could actually tell what it was. So I based this design on leaves, and I love calla lily, so it kind of reminded me of the leaves of the calla lily. And um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint another one, and this is on stretched canvas, so it's on a stretcher bar, and this will be the one I cut. I'm gonna actually do the same overall thing on it. It's sprayed because I didn't wanna do that in here. You know, it takes a little time. It dries quick, but, um, and I'll actually try to repeat this feeling on this canvas then this one will be cut up, this one will be cut, and they'll be woven together. So <clears throat> what I do is just look at it, and I'm using a lot of greens. You can see I have a, a lot of greens. And I usually double load my brush. I put a darker, a lighter, and I think what I'll do is I'll actually add some yellow to the end. And when you do that to your brush, you create some interesting blends, if you can see the brush some interesting blends as you go. So I can see I have this um, pattern here, and I'm not gonna really pay attention to the one I did this morning. I kind of have an idea what I'm gonna do. I start down and I'll just make the shape. Now what happens with this um, uh, metallic, it repels. So it kind of gives you a, like a, beat it up look which is okay because as soon as I get enough paint on it it's going to be fine. process for me was a journey because I'd never done it before and the result has evolved to be something beautiful. Thank you for joining me in my studio. Next up is an exhibit at the Center for the Arts in Gilroy, California. The name of the exhibit is Journeys with three other artists including my own work. Let's go take a look. My name's Imelda, and I'm very inspired by the use of color. I like to paint with um, techniques such as using objects that aren't meant for painting. Um, you can kind of see that through my work. I'm, I'm really into using uh, like straight edges from like a palette knife, sort of kind of the opposite end of a paintbrush. Um, I pretty much just feed off of other artists. If I see, you know, new techniques and styles, I like to kind of recreate, you know, an idea of my own. Um, the images itself come from more or less like the way I'm feeling during that time. I never really have an intention to create an actual picture or photo. I kind of just use it as a base to practice technique. So that's where most of my inspiration comes from. My name is Gonzalo Flores. I'm a local artist here in Gilroy. Um, my inspirations are Salvador Dali, Picasso, and I don't know a lot of the urban artists, but I like a lot of urban artists like spray paint and all that stuff. My name is Rochelle Arellano, and I love words, the rhythm and the music and language, and so I have always been inspired by poets. Um, I love poetry, I love Mary Oliver, I love William Shakespeare, I love... Um, uh, Pablo Neruda, so uh, I love uh, Nezahualcoyotl, which is a Native American poet from Mexico. So I just love poetry, so I've been inspired by that and by nature to write. My name is Carol Peters, and I think I've been inspired most uh, by the Impressionists. I love the color, I love the uh, spontaneity of how they put the color down, like Van Gogh with a palette knife, or sometimes just taking the the tube of paint and just squeezing it on the canvas and experimenting with light. Monet did a lot of uh, paintings 
from early morning till evening over and over and over and over experimenting with how the light would hit haystacks for example that kind of thing so I think uh, I really respond well to bright color I love it and it just gives me energy and I love to go see them in person when I taught I really didn't have time money I had children I didn't have you know the opportunity to see the real thing so as soon as I retired I started just devouring galleries. <laughs> I try to steer away from what I would see naturally. So example, like you were saying, like the trees, um, you know, I went with like a green sky kind of meshed with some purples and blues. That's more of like my imagination side coming out saying like, oh, you know, if we lived in a world of purple sky or like, you know, um, I don't know, if our skin was pink and our hair was blue. And I just try to keep the scheme yeah, within a neutral balance, so it's not overpowering by like fluorescent colors. And so I like to sneak in fluorescent here and there, but for the most part, it's, it's more for um, just kind of understanding what colors really do kind of attract, you know, the eye and what works for, for the moment. I have a painting called Bipolar Weather, and a lot of the images in there reflect on the emotions I've been going through this past year because the year's almost over. <laughs> so um, the, the painting reflects on the weather too, because the weather's been kind of crazy too. So um, there's the rain, the rainbow, uh, the moon, um, the sun. So all those reflect the, the emotions that I've been going through over this past year too. And then I have a Buddha painting and a Jesus painting. I've been going through a lot of uh, religious changes too, like just going through different religions. So that kind of reflects my journey too. These poems are representative of a portion of my experience as I walked uh, 400 of the 500 mile um, way of St. James in Spain last October. Uh, on the way, um, I experienced transformation and I experienced a deep um, connection with other people and their stories. And so my poems are inspired in large part by my impressions of the people I met, the journey I took, and the impact it had on me. When Rochelle um, said that she had walked the Camino and it was her journey and that she had written uh, several poems and they asked me to be part of this exhibit, I, th I thought to myself, I really don't have um, a journey as far as of walking but my journey has always been through people and, and inspiration, people that have given me uh, enrichment in my life. And I'm older now and I always thought of the tapestry of your life being people that have given you things that have made you who you are. So I thought, I wish I could get my children and people I love to put their energy down on canvas and then somehow mesh it together. And then when I thought of the tapestry of your life, I think that was a song or something, I thought, I took weaving in college and I could weave that together. And it would be the energy, mixing media, mixing the energies of different people and combining them all on a canvas. So that's how I started. The journey actually was bigger than that because I had never woven canvas. So I started experimenting with cutting it, doing two, cutting them in, in waves, mm -hmm. uh, trying to weave an image in the canvas. So every one of the canvases are different. When the four of us kind of uh, connected, we were talking about all the different journeys, you know, and how we were trying to make time to be creative and stay, you know, in that artistic feel. And so I was telling them that, you know, I'm on this like journey of unknown because I'm kind of in a, um, a hybrid mode right now. I work, I go to school, I'm almost done and I'm like I'm constantly trying to squeeze time in for for my art and so I'm always on this journey of unknown you know so example this show I'm like wow I never would have thought with all going on in my life I'd be able to produce like you know a show with anybody and so all the paintings that I have present here um, reflect sort of my journey of the unknown. So the three other artists um... Carol, actually, we went, she was my teacher in high school, amongst a lot of artists. <laughs> was she your teacher too? Oh, your teacher. <laughs> um, and then 
through that, I met uh, Emilda. She went to school with me. And Rochelle, actually, I met her here. But it's so funny because Rochelle is uh, Emilda's best friend's mom. So they're all connected. So <laughs> that's how we met. <laughs> This is crazy how people meet. That's the journey too. I named him at the end. I think it's called um, a rhythm in gold, red, and blue. It's it's the one that's on the wall. That one I think to me is the most was the most challenging um, because I cut the canvas in a wave, freehand cutting, you know, and then I cut the opposite direction in another wave, different waves. Okay. Yeah. So when I cut the first one in a wave, it was just floppy. And I thought, okay, it's gone, you know. Mm -hmm. So then I cut the other one, I started weaving it, and it still had that, you know, undulation right, right going on. So I had not only painted in a waves of color and rhythm and movement, but I also had now had cuts that were not right. controllable. <laughs> and then when I went to stretch it and staple it, they were all like, you know, crazy, and I had to kind of number them to figure out what to do with them and yeah. staple it. And then they were still kind of wavy. So then I cut a board and backed it. But I swear, I think that is the most, has the most movement, has the most lyrical feeling. Uh, I just absolutely love it. I, I'm happy. I will do that one again. So the Mermaid and the Minotaur, that was a huge journey for me. Uh, this past year, my sister and my uh, her her boyfriend got married so that was a huge journey for me because I, never, I it was just amazing for my sister to be married so she loves mermaids mermaids are her favorite ever since she was little with the little mermaid um, and then he loves minotaurs because he's more crazy he likes video games and shooting and stuff so um, so I put them together and they're getting married in the painting so you see in the in the painting you see the water dripping down the tail so that reflects him picking her up from the water and the water dripping down. Hmm. So that, that, that was a huge journey for me. I, <laughs> for me. Well, that wraps it up for Arts 101 for this month. Thank you for joining us on our journey and experiencing the many types of art that we have in our community. I'm your host, Carol Peters, and don't forget to have an art-filled month. <laughs>